he was one of the first white men to become a fully initiated shaman or sangoma in the South African Xhosa tribe, the same tribe that gave us Nelson Mandela and Desmond Tutu. He has said that his gift of visions has come from his Irish grandmother and that he's been greatly influenced by the Irish side of his family. His name is John Lockley and his book and autobiography called Leopard Warrior is just out. And John is with me in studio. John, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Pat. Um, maybe you'll explain to us, first of all, what uh, a Sangoma is. A Sangoma is a, is a spirit doctor, a soul doctor, a metaphysician. And uh, the way we work, we are traditional healers. And our job is to help the soul of a person connect with their ancestors, with their bones, with their, you could say, their dreams and their immortality. Now, your father was uh, yes. Rhodesian, or yes. is, <laughs> is uh, and uh, Protestant, and uh, your mother came from Ireland. So the likelihood that you would become a Sangoma was very remote, I would have thought. <laughs> but life being life and people being people, anything's possible. <laughs> um, so uh, how did it happen? It happened through my mother having a, a vision uh, when she was walking the Dunleary Pier in the 1950s. And um, she saw all these elephants, African elephants, and she'd had a love affair for Africa, with Africa for a long time. And after getting this vision on the Dunleary Pier, she felt now she had to take action and actually go to Africa. And she said she wanted to go to Africa and observe African elephants while she still could and while they still roamed free. Mm -hmm. So that was quite an amazing sense because um, years later, when I finished my apprenticeship, my mother had a couple of dreams about, you know, 35 years later. And I had just been initiated and I was at home. And she had a dream where she was in the African bush and all these elephants came to her and she ran up a tree because she was afraid. <laughs> and, and she woke up the next morning, she had a cup of tea with me, she told me the dream. And I said, Mom, next time that happens, climb down from the tree and see what the elephants have to say. And the next night she had the dream again and she climbed up the tree because she was afraid. All these elephants came around. They came in a circle. And then she remembered what I said. And she, claimed, she climbed down from the tree. And all the elephants raised their trunks. And they made this sound. Now, this is a dream. Yeah. And she woke up with a shock. And then the next morning, we had a cup of tea together. And she said, now, John, what does that, mean, that dream mean? And I said, well, it means the Sangoma people, the medicine people from South Africa, have said... Thank you, Siabolela, because... Thank you for giving us your son. Yes, because the Sangoma people um, were shown through the elephants. The elephants are known as the, 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 the Sangoma people. Now, when did you think that life uh, had a different, uh, I suppose, direction for you compared to what might have been expected, given your background? I suppose I didn't have any expectations as such growing up in apartheid growing up in the 70s and 80s, I, I was just a sensitive, sensitive soul, and I, I felt... You felt for people in the townships, for example, where others just regarded them as, I suppose, the servants of the white nation. Um, you felt for their difficulties. Yes, and also I felt for the difficulties of, of, of people who are homeless. I, I was very empathic. I'm still very empathic. So I used to feel the suffering of animals and the suffering of people, and... Um, and my mother used to recognise that and, and, and say that I had the eyes of her, her mother, her, yeah. my grandmother. Was there a particular crisis in your life that led to the decision to become, if they would accept you, uh, a Sangoma? Well, it's interesting. The crisis happened with me getting what we call the calling illness, which is a very intricate physical illness, and it's not psychosomatic. It's a, a number of night sweats and dreams and getting very thin and I was very sick for about seven years and and I need to mention that I, I never went to train to become a Sangoma. The elders recognized me and my teacher dreamt about me before she met me and she offered to train me and I was actually, I didn't say yes in the beginning, I was very nervous. Uh, because of the situation in South Africa and all the elders came to me, the closer elders, and they said we welcome you in. Would you like to join us? And it, it took some time, and eventually I said, yes, I'll join you. <laughs> now, now, you believe that whatever it is within you that allows you to be a Sangoma, it comes from the Irish side of your family. It comes from both sides, but I could definitely say the, the gift of seeing or the gift of prophecy, I definitely get that from my Irish side, from my grandmother. 
Was there pushback at all from your own family against the direction, as you say, you were selected by uh, the Sangoma to be one of them? But was there pushback? I mean, had they different expectations uh, for you? I suppose the pushback was very subtle because my friends and family obviously love me and they're very compassionate. And I think it was a very quiet kind of pushback if there was anything like that. It was just a no-go area. Even now, today, a lot of my friends in South Africa, my white middle-class friends, don't discuss my work as a Sangoma. Do they think you're a cracker? You're crazy? I don't know. We'd have to ask them. But they just don't... They, it's, not, it's a world that they are not familiar with, so we don't speak about it. We'll speak but, about their world, not mine. The fact that you're you're here, and uh, I know you're launching Leopard Warrior uh, with a seminar tonight in Beauty's Cafe in uh, Grafton Street in Dublin, then you're having a, a workshop in the Talbot Hotel, that's on the 9th of June on Saturday. Uh, the 10th then, there's a, a healing dance workshop and that's happening in Greystones, and then a three-day retreat in Kerry from the 28th of June to the 1st of uh, July, and also private healing sessions in Dunleary. All information can be found on uh, johnlockley.com. Uh, okay. So what is it that you now do? So I travel the world a lot, and um, what I do is I give public talks, and I run retreats, and I give private healing sessions. And the focus of everything that I do could be summed up in the Krosa word, which means masiembo which means let us remember. Let us remember our human spirit. Let us remember our dreams and our connection to the old people. Now, you mentioned to me that singing is part of what you do. Now, we don't have an awful lot of time. So is there just a, maybe 30 seconds, 40 seconds of an example you could give us of uh, singing? Yes, sure. Uh, the word sangoma means people of the song. So, sure, I can sing something. Now, what did that mean? Uh, so, Abazaliba means my parents, but it means my ancestors. It means my my essence. You know, the people who created me. And then Utikrawa means the great spirit. You could say the cosmic dreamer. Um, you know that this world that we live in is so busy and so complex, mm -hmm. so technologically uh, based. And do you believe that's damaging to us, that we need to take time out from that kind of life? Yes, definitely. And people are turning into zombies. People are forgetting who they are. They're forgetting their humanity. Yeah. Um, when you meet people on a one-to-one -one basis, I mean, you mentioned your white South African friends mm -hmm. uh, don't really understand where you're coming from. They don't uh, have an experience of the Kosa culture. Um, can Irish people understand? I mean, do they get it? It's not about cross culture. It's not about white culture. It's about human culture. And Nelson Mandela and, and Desmond Tutu speak about Ubuntu. And that comes from uh, the old cross way, which means humanity. So my work is...